Hi Karen, I hope you're well. I'm desperately in need of your advice. Chloe was sleep trained at eight months and going well, but is now 20 months and for the last few weeks, she's super clingy and at bedtime keeps wanting us to stay in the room. Sometimes it's the same for naps. She'll mess for ages before going to sleep, but will shout, sit as soon as we get, get up to leave. She wakes two to three times a night and asks for water. And again, wants you to sit until she's asleep. I feel like she's not self-settling and wants the reassurance that we're there. She's been going to childcare since September and was happy. But again, in the last few weeks, she cries going in. It's hard as she messes if we sit in the room, but it's hard hearing her cry, Mama, if I leave. What do you recommend? I know she'll probably go down quicker if I leave, but hearing her cry is so tough. You know best, so I'll follow what advice you give. Thanks. Rightio. This is a really common scenario I get asked about. Now, at six to eight months, they're learning to be separate. At 16 to 18 months, it becomes final. It's a grief and loss process. It's like every time you put them down in the cot, you're pulling the heart out of their body. However, this needs to happen and they need to feel this grief and loss to become a complete individual. Um, this is a healthy, normal attachment. This is what attachment theory is all about in psychology. It's about learning to be separate, learning to be independent of your caregiver. Before this age, they thought they were attached to you. So this is like cutting the cord. So I always say, it's like, you know, me being a midwife, you cut the cord at birth. You as the mum, you've got to cut the cord again. And everything, every time you say goodbye to her, whether it's school, daycare, whatever, it's cutting the cord, but it has to happen. And when children cry, they get rid of stress. It releases cortisol, okay? Now we need to give her that reassurance that you're still there for her. What you'd do is you'd settle her by being in the room and using my magic presence method where you're present but you're doing nothing and each week you move on with the process and we need to let that stuff out. Now the water thing that you mentioned, do not give water in the middle of the night. So many parents in Australia do this and we think oh it's hot weather I need to give them water they're thirsty. No you don't, they need to drink water in the day, they're not going to dehydrate I promise. And I wouldn't put it in the cart. Again, lots of parents do this, it's trouble. And when we give something to a child in the middle of the night, and we do this for more than a week after four months, we create a new sleep problem. And so she's now waking up because you've rewarded the behavior with the water. So you need to not give the water. You need to resettle with the magic presence. And what I would do is I'd actually start back at the cot again and move out each week. Because any regression you get, any, you know, anything that flicks their switch, so to speak, go back to the start. As I always say, it's a bit like snakes and ladders. You go up the ladder and down the snake again, and the snake is the developmental leaps. So that is my answer. And within a week or two, you're going to have peace again, but you need to let the grief and loss happen. You need to let the crying happen, but you need to be present. The key thing about most of parenting is be present to support the emotions, it's holding space, but do nothing. Support them, but do nothing. She doesn't need your help. She doesn't need water. She doesn't need all these things that you think she needs. You see, when they become little people, they start asking for stuff and parents think they need to give this stuff. You don't. I'm gonna liberate you.